Today on Flipping Science we're going to look at how to figure out the electron configuration of monatomic ions up to number 38 on the periodic table. So we're just going to go through some examples and have a look at what the general rules are to figure out what the charges are going to be. So let's look at oxygen to start with. So oxygen is on the periodic table, which is number 8 over here. So I figured out the electron configuration, so I need to pit, put, put in 8 electrons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I can see where they go, so I've got 2 in the 1s subshell, 2 in the 2s subshell, and 4 in the 2p subshell. Then I need to ask myself, what can I do to make this stable? So the rule is either you have full subshells or half full subshells. So in this case, for oxygen, there's two spaces for electrons in the outermost shell here. So I'm going to put those in. What that'll do is it'll give me an electron configuration where I have a full outer shell. Problem is I've gained two electrons, so now I need to figure out what the charge is going to be. Because so I've gained two electrons, that means I've got two more uh, electrons than protons. So it is going to be the O minus two or O two minus ion. So it's gained two electrons, it's filled up that subshell there. So now we've got electrons all over the place. So we've got four, we're happy. Let's look at another example. Look at chlorine. So chlorine, number, look at it on the periodic table. Chlorine here, number 17. So I need to put in 17 electrons. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So in this case, if we look in the outermost shell, so it's the third main shell, the 3P subshell, we can see that there's one space for an electron left. So if I write out the electron configuration again, S23P6, now I've filled the outer shell, that's much more stable. I used one electron that I added in, so I'm going to have one more electron than protons, so that's going to give me the chloride ion Cl-. Okay. So in these cases, for non-metals, you're filling up outer shells. So you're adding electrons, which is going to give you negative charges. Let's look at another example now. We'll look at calcium. So I'm working my way up the periodic table. We'll look at calcium. Find calcium on my periodic table. Here it is, number 20. So I need to put in 20 electrons. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now in this case, it has a full 3P subshell underneath. And it's got these two electrons in the 4S subshell outside. So these, we don't have a full four, uh, four main shell. So we've got these two electrons that are sitting in the outermost shell, the 4S subshell. So what's going to happen is it's going to lose those two electrons, which means when we're writing out the electron configuration, it's going to be 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6. So that gives us a full 3P shell underneath, and the 4S subshell is lost. So we're losing those 4s electrons. That, because we've lost two electrons, that means we have two more protons in the nucleus. So that gives it a charge of plus 2. So it's the calcium plus 2 ion, or the calcium ion. Let's look at another example in the transition metals now. Now this is where it gets interesting and complicated. Go to the transition metals. So I'm doing manganese as my example. Manganese, so it's number 25. So I put in 25 electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now notice how when I'm filling up the shells, I go down first and then I'll fill up over here. The reason for that is that tells me where I've got empty electrons in my orbitals. So if we're looking at manganese, it has a half full 3D subshell. So that's really, really stable. So that's great. The problem is it's got these four S electrons that are sitting there. So when it's reacting, it's going to lose those two four S, but keep the 3D because that's stable. So when it's losing electrons, it's losing the four S. So one S2, two S2, two P6, three S2, three P6, no four S anymore, get rid of that, three D5. So that's our electron configuration. We've lost two electrons, so we've got two more protons than electrons, so that gives it a charge of plus two. This is shows the general rule when we're working with the transition metals, get rid of the highest principal number electrons first. So in this case, get rid of the 4S before you get rid of any of the 3D. 
So we'll do another example. Let's look at iron. Iron forms two stable ions, which is going to be very confusing when I'm going to say it over and over again. So iron forms a plus two and a plus three iron. So we're going to look at those two ions and where they come from. Okay. So we'll write out the electron configuration to start with. So we've got 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d6. All right. Now, the first ion we'll make is the Fe plus 2 ion. To do that, we follow the rule that we had before. You get rid of your 4s before anything else. So we're going to get rid of those. So now I've lost those two electrons there. I've got 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d6. So that's my electron configuration of the Fe plus 2 ion. So we get rid of the 4s before we get rid of anything else. The reason why it makes another ion, the Fe3 plus ion, which I'll do in green, Fe plus 3, is if I get rid of this electron here, that gives me a half full 3D subshell, which is very stable. So I'll get rid of that one too. So to make the uh, Fe plus 3 ion, we've got 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and this time 3d5. So there's two stable ions here for the ion for figuring out iron ions. Again, that gets confusing, doesn't it? So, that's basically how you do it. You need to figure out if it's a non-metal, it's going to be gaining electrons to fill up a shell. If it's a metal, it's going to be losing electrons to empty out a shell, essentially. And that's basically how you figure it out. From here, you just work your way up. So, that's it for Flippin' Science today. See ya!